Hello guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. This is part three of a little series I've been doing on building a travel rig. Um, it's not quite the video I wanted. I wanted to present this video in a format that was me outside actually using all the equipment um, and then showing it getting used in action and then revealing hopefully a beautiful nebula at the end. Um, fortunately, it's not going to happen. Um, hopefully the, the image that I took will will come out okay. I've yet to, to stack that and process that. Um, it's the uh, Rosetta Nebula and I haven't shot that before and it's in the north and it's fairly low so it's made it a challenge and there's only a window really I've got of a couple of hours uh, each night and the weather has been really crap and there is no sign of it uh, stopping and uh, which will mean it'll be uh, another few weeks before I get a chance to really have a uh, have a go so I didn't want to wait that long to make a video and also the target is going to be getting quite l even lower on the horizon at that time. What I've done though is I've kind of put a little demonstration on how the equipment works um, for you anyway and uh, hopefully Hopefully uh, you will like the video. All right, um, I have my little rig set up over here now. And uh, I have my phone and I've got the hotspot on my phone. The little Miel PC, which is on the little rig is connected to this. Um, so it's hotspotting directly to that. And the tablet here is also hotspotting to my phone. So now on the screen here, and I don't know if you can see it very well because of reflections, but this is the screen uh, for the little telescope, the computer on the telescope. So I can now control everything from here. So first thing I'll fire up the Syscam uh, app and I will connect my mount. I think it's going to do it automatically anyway. And now I can fire Nina up. Now this is a little bit sluggish because I've actually got capture software running in the background on this tablet too. So it's got uh, a fair few things going on. Um, it's normally a bit quicker than that. What I've done too is I've got a little wireless mount, mouse and I've connected it via the USB-C connector and it makes life a lot easier. Load my profile. And I'm going to over my sequencer. I've been shooting the Rosetta Nebula and it's been a bit tough. Uh, it's fairly low on the horizon and is not out for very long. There you are. You can see there that even when it becomes dark tonight, even though the moon's starting to come out, uh, it's only a couple of hours really uh, before it just gets like 30 degrees is just way too low. I shouldn't really be, be shooting it now. Uh, I've kind of left, uh, I've missed the optimal point to take this, but it's not going to happen now because the skies have been clouded for days and there's no sign of it. So this is why I'm kind of, I did want to shoot this video um, and show the whole thing in operation, but it's not going to happen. So I'll just run through a few things. So I've shot, um, with my 294C camera, which I've got on there, the QHY. I've shot 49 images so far, just in color, no filter. Um, and then I've shot um, a 38 so far with, uh, with my um, duo band, ZWO duo band filter. And unfortunately I forgot to put a UV IR filter in when I, so these first color images are just completely straight onto the sensor. Um, and I didn't, I had a lot of problems with my guiding at first, trying to get it all set up. Um, I had some problems with PHD2. Nina wasn't automatically uh, triggering it uh, when a sequence started. And I, I don't think it's Nina's fault, it's my fault. Probably I can't, I just couldn't work out how to, and I still haven't quite worked out how to do it. I've had to start uh, PHD2 manually every time. Uh, so 
I've put my darks and my bias, I've done that already and I'll probably start to process some images. But just to show you how um, this works, I will connect now to my telescope. Connect that because I've already connected my Syscan driver up earlier. So I've successfully connected to that. So I can now control my telescope from here. And I'm quite impressed so far with the little sky watcher. Once I, um, I polar aligned it and the polar alignment routine was fairly easy. I used sharp cap, which is just brilliant um, tool for doing that, um, which I've also got on the software in here. Um, all I did was pole line it. I did no um, star alignment at all. And uh, I did a test swing to, um, well, when it first went, slewed to the Rosetta Nebula. It went almost straight to it. You, it wasn't perfect, but it, you could definitely see it in the screen. So that's pretty impressive considering there's no star alignment. Um, now let's see. Back to our sequencer. So, I'll show you a few of the images that I have got from previous nights. And these are my, just my color images. Um, mind you, there's not even a UV filter on these, so the stars will be a little bit um, expanded. But I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, and I'm pretty impressed because they're three minute subs. And those stars are pretty round. So I'm, I'm generally pretty happy with that. Um, let's have a look at the duo band images. Is that one there? I like the fact that um, the Nina can debay us straight out. Um, so you see images in color. Not used to that because I'm usually, usually looking at Sequence Generator Pro, which don't give you that option. Um, at least I haven't been able to find that option. But I think that's pretty good. I'll zoom in a little bit there. I'm pretty happy. So I'm looking forward to stacking the little data I have. I think by the time I throw out all my rubbish um, from getting my guiding right and, and learning uh, PhD too, which uh, means I'll probably have to throw away half my images. And that was kind of why I didn't film that part of the process because you didn't want to see me um, chucking a tantrum and carrying on like a, a, a weirdo, uh, trying to uh, get all this operational, pulling my hair out, etc. So uh, I was going to, uh, to, to do my last night where the whole thing was in action, but it just didn't happen. So now I'm just going to stack what I've got. I might have, I'm hoping about two and a half hours of data between the color and the duo band, and we'll see what we get.